Okay, so as uh, there's only Karma uh, Chokunga, so I have to be Gyokpo Gyokpo. So I'm going to speak in my native language, okay? Of course. So um, I'm coming from the West, and in the West we have a lot of disease which is not very easily recognized, and the Western doctors don't know what to do with it. So they have these kinds of fun. So, um, so fibromyalgia is a bit of a sort of a trash disease, as we like to call it in America, meaning that they just sort of give this uh, diagnosis to people when they really don't know what else to call it. They don't know how to treat it. So um, I started looking particularly at how to relate this to Bumen, and particularly within the Minakur in the uh, Lung Liu. Yeah. So I looked particularly, if you see, these are the symptoms of fibromyalgia in the West. So a lot of pain, swelling, they feel very squeezed, and sometimes they're walking and they're very stiff. Um, oftentimes they, uh, they have a lot of low energy, fatigue, insomnia, depression, uh, digestive disturbances. Most especially, they're very sensitive. These are the people that will come to you and say like, oh, if I take the medicine, I need a half dose because they're very sensitive to the medicine. They're very sensitive to cold. They're very sensitive to heat. They're very anxious. They feel like a sakasigi, you know? They're very, um, uh, sometimes they'll say like, I can feel inside my body, I can feel the nerves as if they're plugged in. So they'll say like, as if I'm in the wall. And numbness, tingling, Especially sometimes they can have a lot of burning pain, almost like neuropathy on their feet, uh, especially and anywhere. And of course, typical to lung, it's roving pain. So these are the symptoms by the Western medicine. You can look in the paper later. And then these are the symptoms from the Gyushi, okay? So if you're looking at the lung chapter, you can see, okay, we all know pain which moves, which is unstationary. This is classic lung and stiffness in the joints, difficulty moving, shivering, and like pain is more worse when um, they're exercising, then they have more increased pain. Also this feeling of being squeezed or uh, rengpa and kumpa, so their limbs are sort of contracting, especially you can classify this like restless leg syndrome where the leg is like twitching in the night and waking them up. Feeling of a very intense pain as if you're being beaten with thorns, walking on rocks, insomnia, desire to stretch, yawning. All of these general symptoms of lung match this fibromyalgia. So by my thinking, as I started to treat more of this type of disease, I just started going more deep into the lung chapter. So we all know lung almost never is lung kyangpa, right? This is very rare. Mostly lung is combining either with hot or with cold. So you have to think hot or cold. So we know that without lung, if we control the lung, we control. So if we control the lung, we can control the disease. So this way, you know, lung is responsible for, um, you know, growing, increasing, spreading, hardening, intensifying all other secondary disorders when it's combined. And so in this way, also, if you have some sort of substance uh, or something is not correct within the, um, the three sort of primary energies of lung tipa pagan, then automatically it can enter into the wrong channel, it can make a blockage, it can do all these kinds of things. So here's some, you know, basic uh, photos. You know, of course, we have Lung Tipa Pagan. <laughs> so always uh, I'm thinking of Mashua. I'm thinking of the indigestion. So then I went to the, uh, in the chapter particularly, you can go to the eight summarized symptoms out of uh, the 20. I picked these particular uh, symptoms which correlate to the Western diagnosis. So you have the stiff and shrunken, dryness, bloating, paralyzed pain, sort of uh, mental instability, um, and sort of cognitive challenges is how I tend to translate kukpa because if you translate kukpa directly into English, then people get a little angry. So this is just like they say like, oh, I'm in a fog, I can't think clearly. So then if you took the 20 specific disorders by the different type, if you look particularly at the rig, then you can see that these five match almost exactly for the fibromyalgia. So we have the shengreng, which I translate as wood-like stiffness, bashitse, which uh, is mostly like loss of finger and hand function, and lareng, you know, stiff thighs, and uh, tsermatse. 
uh, with thorns. So, and then also the uh, Kangxi, walking on top of rocks. So if you were to look at these, you can think a little bit more like single lung or lung is uh, combined due to the indigestion situation with the pagan. And so um, I'm looking at these specifics often when I'm thinking about fibromyalgia. So then, of course, we have the 28 specific locations, according to the Gyushi. So uh, you can look at this, a, a little time difficulty, I know. So I have a little more now. So, you know, of course, you can see skin, muscle, fat, nerves, blood, tendon, ligament, bone, joint, bone marrow, reproductive fluid, heart, lungs, liver, spleen, kidney. So a place of digest, this is a little bit, uh, I think we need some more research according to this, because if you look, uh, particularly if you're trying to understand where the pagan nachi and the menum lung and the chipa juje is, I really think the place of digest happens to be in the duodenum, in the first 12 inches. I know this is not actually what's taught, but from a Western anatomy point of view, I think this is a little bit more uh, direct because this is where uh, most of the absorption is happening within side the guma, and it's actually going into a system which in Western medicine we call the hepatic portal vein system, which this is very much relating to the dangma and the lusung. So I have some little doubt, and I, I always put duodenum there, but this is not according to the classic text, okay? Then place of undigest, place of post-digest, gallbladder, rectum, urine, womb, uh, head, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, whole body. So this is like the general uh, specific location. And then of this, I take the um, eight out of the 28 by location. And again, I'm thinking about the nature of lung. I'm thinking about how lung is acting either by itself, singly, or when it's combined with something else. So most often you can say, especially in my place in America, 90%, really you can say this anywhere, right? 90% of the disease is coming from the ma mashua, it's coming from the indigestion, then this is leading to some sort of chronic situation. So if you think about how lung is acting, so it's either spreading on the skin, right? It's um, attacking the muscle, it's entering the channel, it um, enters or attacks the ligaments, it goes into the bone, into the joints, it attacks the bone marrow or the whole body. So we all are Tibetan doctors here mostly, so you all know very specifically what these symptoms entail, right? So like for example, if it's attacking the bone marrow, those type of people, they have the insomnia. They have the sort of uneasiness of their mind and they have a, a lot of difficult pain, really intense pain as if they're being squeezed. And um, also, like, uh, if you look at, like, the joints and the ligaments being attacked and you see the rengpa and the kumpa, this is a very classic lung example. So just, again, I'm sort of, sort of proving that uh, fibromyalgia is due to lung. So then we have the chotop. So how do we treat it? So in America, I always say there's uh, four methods of treatment in Tibetan medicine. So I tell everyone, okay, this is like, you are used to going to the Inji Amchi, and you're used to going to the Western medicine, and you stand on le one leg. They give you medicine. I'm depressed, here's your medicine. You stand on one leg. How long can you stand on one leg? You can't, yeah? But if you have Se and Cholam very strongly, if the doctor gives you very good instructions, then this is two legs, you don't need the doctor, you can walk down the road. They say, this is the path, this is what you need in your bag, and you go. Yeah, so we always try in our clinic, my husband and I, we're always trying to really emphasize Se and Cholam mostly, because if you give this, especially to the Western person, they have uh, Yicheke, yeah? So they get a little bit more faith in the Tibetan medicine system. Then slowly, slowly, you can introduce more medicines and more herbs. And if you think about many of the herbs for Lung, these are all found in the common kitchen, right? So we have all these kinds of things, which is very beneficial to Lung, which is in our own kitchen. So I'm trying to uh, educate the people on how to use the basic spices, almost like a katsar, okay, and uh, adding that on top. So we give a Lung diet, Lung behavior, Lung medicine, and Lung external therapies. Uh, so by my thinking, I think a lot of times things are very uh, much due to the blocked channels. Uh, so the methods of treatment for the specific diet, again, you're all really amchis, so I don't need to tell you. So warm, nutritious, 
good food cooked. You know, in America, I just say salad and you, you are enemies. You are not friends and you are never going to be friends. Okay. So then we get into our very specific behavior. So also in the West, uh, so mostly you have to get the people to learn how to relax a little bit. Okay. <laughs> this is a big job. This is a huge job for the Amchi. You have to actually, I really appreciated this morning. Um, and when he was talking about the autoimmune and getting people to tell your stories. People tell me everything. 30, 40 minutes, they'll tell me all their sad stories. They feel really lighter and better, you know? Um, so, of course, avoiding any diet and behavior which is aggravating. Sleep. Sleep is the best medicine for the lung, of course. And, of course, you know, uh, not in the case of when the pagan enters the channels, but massage is also we're getting into I sometimes call massage behavior in the West so especially in the lung chapter we can look at the specific treatment and uh, due to the uh, you all know these so we have the tang and the chang and the dun especially um, I find the third one is most helpful and then um, sports especially uh, Zati. Zati is especially good for lung, so either like chiktang or just uh, you can add to the food. And then I'll make the um, sindhu menmar for the patients. Uh, decoctions, broth. Yeah, it's okay. Then just one thing I want to say is, of course, don't massage if there's pagan. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>